Hi, and welcome to another Excel demo with Rich Kerr. Uh, in this scenario, we're going to do, or we're going to revisit, I should say, um, a video that we did a few years ago about using the hyperlink function to research company data uh, at Google Finance. And I had someone ask, is this doable in the web version? And it is. So I thought we'd revisit it. But then we're going to compare what you get out of Google Finance with what you can get directly with Excel's special data types. We'll talk about that next. And uh, I'll say at the outset, this works in both the web version and the installed desktop version of Excel. Uh, you want to make sure you have the latest updates to have all of this functionality. Um, so uh, let's, let's proceed. So here, let's first talk about that. Google Finance uh, query that you can run with the hyperlink function. So I've got a list of ticker symbols for different companies in column A. And in column B, I'll start in cell B2, and we'll do uh, equals hyperlink. And then you, uh, you put your hyperlink text in a set of quotation marks. So it's HTTPS colon slash slash. And uh, then we'll do www.google.com forward slash uh, finance uh, and then question mark the letter Q and an equal symbol now this is the core Google Finance search string so what you want to come after the equal sign is whatever you're looking up within Google's uh, finance uh, database so we're going to attach with the and symbol we will attach the value from cell a2 uh, so that's going to query the ticker meta. Now, <clears throat> we'll put a comma here and we'll use the optional feature or optional parameter of the hyperlink function called uh, friendly name, where you can not show the full hyperlink in your cell just because it can be kind of long and heinous looking. So you can just, and this is optional, but you can put just a label for your link. So we'll say, um, we'll say um, research and then and a2 close parent so now it just says research meta and if i fill that down let's do that again so we'll go to that cell and we'll drag that down to the other cell so now it says research and then whatever that ticker is so if i click research meta uh it opens up the google finance browser and it's uh, within the browser and it's showing us the lookup of meta within Google Finance. I'm going to go back to my Excel file, I'll do the next one. So you can see it works just fine. I looked up uh, Apple, uh, look up uh, Lucid. You get the idea. So it gives you all that rich information uh, that Google Finance has on all the companies that are publicly traded. Uh, so it's very rich, uh, lots of info here for you to do your research. Now, <clears throat> if you don't want to do the lookup to Google Finance or that's, you know, you want to incorporate that data into your spreadsheet, finally, uh, Microsoft has given us the ability to do that. Uh, if you go to the data tab, and this again is both in the web version and desktop version, you have the section for uh, data types. It's what it's labeled in the desktop version. In the web version, it's just there on the ribbon, uh, more towards the left side of the ribbon when you're on data. So what you can do is you can, you can select a range of cells and tell Excel what special data type it contains. And one of those options is stocks. You see when you use it frequently, they collect up here in the recently used, but you should be able to find it in the library of options. Let's go with stocks. So it tries to interpret the tickers uh, that you saw. You'll also get a disclaimer that, hey, uh, this data is as is. There's no guarantee <laughs> of the accuracy of the data. And that's okay for, for these purposes. Okay. So <clears throat> it transformed what I had entered in column A into the special data type. And now you can extract a variety of other data points from that information. It's actually a very special type of formula component. If I type equals in cell B2 and then click on A2, I'll type a dot and you get a drop down list, almost like dot notation with objects and properties in a programming environment. So with A2 as the reference or the object, then dot, I can pick 
what was the 52-week high price or low price or what currency is it traded in, uh, which exchange is it on, right? So it tells me that it's traded on NASDAQ. So that I could call this column exchange and we'll make that bold. And I can pull that formula down to the other rows as well. These all happen to be NASDAQ uh, traded uh, stocks. And so I'll go over here and do another one. We'll say equals A2 dot, and I want to know what's been the high price of this uh, security uh, over the past year, and that is the value, 353.83. And again, I can drag that down, and we'll call it uh, 52 week high. So you get some granular information. It's not all packaged up in a neat and tidy bow like you see on Google Finance. But the benefit is that you can sort of pull out these granular data points as you see fit and then construct your spreadsheet accordingly. Uh, we'll do one more. Let's see. Um, how many employees does that company have? There you go. So we'll call this uh, employee count. And, of course, there's my typo, which we'll fix, and we'll bold that. Now, the one difference that you'll see with this functionality in the desktop version is when you click on the cell that you've converted into the stock data type. Oh, actually, there is no difference. They have put the little card here, too. So when I click in this cell, notice this little properties card that pops out to the side. So if I click it, it also shows me the available options to choose from instead of you having to write the formula in an adjacent cell. So let's say I want to know the market cap. That's one of the properties. It also figures out that you've got additional data already to the side. So it just goes to the next available open column and it puts in the market cap. So that's another bit of simplicity that they've added to this is that you don't even have to really write the formula in that dot notation. You just go to the cell in question, click that little properties card, and then pick the item that you want. So we'll say uh, headquarters, and you see it gives us the headquarters address now uh, for Meta. So we'll call this uh, HQ. So I can pull out you know, those two data points in that way. And it's still the same formula, right? It's the, it's the cell reference A2 dot and then the property in question. I'll select both of those, and then uh, we'll drag it down. So this is a comparison of the hyperlink function taking you to Google Finance, which gives you a lot of data, historical data. You can change parameters once you're there uh, versus doing the special data type and uh, pulling these specific data points out using formulas. So obviously this is something that you can incorporate into your spreadsheet, whereas the Google Finance is just a link to Google's finance page. Both can be useful depending on what your needs are. I encourage you to check it out. And again, both are available in the desktop and web versions. Uh, for the desktop, what you want to do is make sure that you're in the um, early um, adopter um, um, subscription level. And you can do that in the uh, account options in Excel. So you'll go to your file tab and go to account and make sure that you're in the beta or early, uh, early adopter. I think it's called beta. Um, subscription type and so you'll have all those functionalities if you're in the beta level but you can do that with your subscription you just go and change it inside excel i uh, hope you found this useful please check in again soon for more excel tips with rich kerr have a productive day